we've doubled down, tripled down in terms of um, you know pipeline inspection in that regard. In our vernacular, we call it uh, you know pipeline prosecution. Pipeline prosecution is critical to IPO success. Welcome to The Forecast, I'm Molly St. Louis, and today we have Sumo Logic's Chief Revenue Officer, Steve Fitz, here to discuss the company's recent public offering and the remarkable pipeline tactics that help them achieve this milestone. Few funded startups ever achieve IPO. In fact, many never even come close, mostly for reasons such as poor product market fit, running out of cash, or having the wrong team. But for those who are able to achieve IPO, there's a different set of challenges that come with making that IPO successful. According to a Goldman Sachs analysis of nearly 5,000 IPOs, the top attributes that can make or break a company include profitability and sales growth. Which brings us to the sales pipeline. Yes, you need laser-focused visibility into your pipeline before going public. After all, every metric will now be out in the open and under scrutiny. Then, of course, you have to be surgical about your sales growth moving forward to make sure that that IPO is successful. And that is largely down to the efficiency and effectiveness of your team as they inspect and execute against that pipeline. Whether your company has its sights set on future IPO or you're a public company delivering a call to the street, it's time to become a master of your pipeline. And masters, learn from other masters. Welcome Steve Fitz, CRO of Sumo Logic. Steve, thank you for joining us on The Forecast. Happy to be here. We're so excited about your recent IPO. Congratulations are in order, obviously. Yeah, thank you. I, I think in many ways, uh, an IPO is a public funding event, but I think what we've learned through this uh, process and experience is it's, it's much more than that. Um, it's a lot of hard work that a lot of employees put into this, obviously the early investors and such, and it's a it's a great uh, event for the company in general, and it's a you know in many ways it's a public validation as well. For sure, and we were all certainly watching, and we have many questions. So let's talk about your pipeline. As Sumo Logic set its sights on IPO, did you have to take a different lens to how you think about and manage your pipeline for the business? We certainly did. I, I think if you look back on you know this goes back 18 months um, plus now in terms of just the the readiness for this or the preparation for it and looked worked a lot with uh, with finance and um, our marketing partners in that regard you know and we've doubled down tripled down in terms of um, you know pipeline inspection in that regard in our in our vernacular we call it uh, you know pipeline prosecution so you know a lot of companies focus on the top line side of the pipe we we you know have really gone deliberately into stage conversion. We have eight stages and we, you know, look at the uh, conversion per stage and then really um, get very detailed inspection on what's working and what's not working. Have you found that you've had to get more specific about certain areas of the pipeline as you were getting closer to IPO? I'd say we amped up our, you know, inspection of pipe and the other piece I'd say is our return investment in the pipe we're generating, right? So, you know, there's different ways to do it today in terms of generating pipe. We expect our sellers to generate about 50% of their pipe. And then our marketing uh, demand gen um, team actually is responsible for that other 50% of the pipe. And we achieved that on the macro basis. If I go back, you know, gosh, eight, 10 quarters, we've achieved that. Now, what's underneath the covers is what matters. And that's that inspection that I talked about earlier in terms of uh, the stage conversion. And while we're talking about stage conversion, let's review some forecasting statistics. We have our Clary expert, David Del Nero here with some key data. David, what do you have for us? Hi everyone. As Steve mentioned, weekly forecasts tend to become more rigorous as companies speed towards IPO. And this is both at a leadership and more importantly, at a rep level. This means accuracy needs to be even more precise. And our data shows that a shocking 93% of sales teams can't forecast within a 5% accuracy range. And that's even within the last couple weeks of a fiscal quarter. This trend can certainly impede the growth of otherwise successful companies. So the takeaway here, if you're looking to IPO or make a major transition in your company, you need pipeline visibility now. It will help your team forecast with better accuracy and make informed decisions about overcoming challenges in your organization. 
and ultimately targeting new, healthier pipeline with a higher probability of conversion. Back to you, Molly. Thanks for that, David. Steve, I want to go back to what you said about having the sales side generate 50% of the pipeline and then the marketing side generating their 50% of the pipeline. Are there any things that you do to help unite your marketing and sales team and get everybody on the same page? We do. We spend a lot of time with that. And I partner um, with our CMO on a weekly basis. We sponsor a meeting between sales and marketing and we kind of tackle the, you know, we call the biggest issues. We bring them to the table. It's a, you know, team that, you know, probably spans from eight to 10 people in every, you know, every week that we uh, get together. And we really just go after the, the tough things. And that, that meeting, uh, you know, requires a lot of candor on both sides. Um, we're not afraid to um, call out the things that aren't working. Um, and it's more about just addressing them and figuring out a, you know, a way to, um, you know, improve the execution across that. So I, I think if you look at pipeline today in general, you know, back to your original question, it's like that. I think that the cooperation and the collaboration between sales and marketing is, you know, never more evident than it's been today. Um, and you can't have, you know, this, you need, you need a lot of this. Steve, what is your forecast for the future of successful revenue teams? I, I, I believe it's about delivering world-class customer experience, as I talked about earlier, because I think don't ever lose that lens. That'll take you a long way and longer than you ever think it's gonna be. I think, uh, you know, in speaking to many of our customers, you know, they compare us to others and it's a differentiator and we probably even underserve that ourselves. And I, I think the, uh, the other piece uh, that I just referenced is that value conversation and making sure that you're helping the customer capture the value. And you're leading with that from a value statement perspective. They might not agree with everything, but if they agree with, um, you know, three quarters of it, 50% of it, you're ahead of the game. Delivering customer experience and business value will always contribute to a healthy sales pipeline before and after IPO. Many thanks to Steve Fitz and congratulations again to the Sumo Logic team on their great success. To all of you joining us, thank you for watching and until next time, stay healthy, stay focused, and stay connected.